on plastic bag patrol over the curve of the earth. On plastic bag patrol over the curve of the earth. It was a cloud, calm, cloudy morning in the land of Saganu. In the Port Perfect, the tiny triplets waited for the wind to arrive to blow them over the curve of the earth to far distant seas where giant plastic bags could be found floating, discarded and forgotten. It says in the great book of Samu that the giant plastic bags once belonged to human humans who lived a long way away. In the time before this time, the giant plastic bags are most cherished as the scared sail, sail makers use them as sail clothes for the fleet. Of all the boats in Port Perfect that morning, one of the most striking was Stavenlon the Moorcat with two masts and a set of beautiful blue and white sail. In the seas around Sagamu lived the giant sea serpents. Over the centuries, they have delivered a taste for Sagamu sailor boats, especially live ones. Davalon the Moor Cat and Slib Dib the Lib defended the fleet from danger. Danger. The tiny tribbles, Waggery, Waikatan, and Philiton, were going out on plastic bag patrol for the first time and felt understandably nervous. The wind finally arrived. Down in the bay, the boats knew what to do. The silent sailors held up the inch shots and with their supernatural strength and the little tiny triplets took a last look at Mount Sugumu, still partly hidden in the early morning mist. They wonder if they'll ever see it again. Lagu Larry, with his bright purple sailors, looked towards the Great Bend Groves. Great Bend, Great Bends are the main food in the land of the Sagamu. They are carved into tiny blocks by the giant bird grove worker for everyone to eat. As shadows, as the boat left Port Perfect, far off of, far off up the coast, De Villon could see the dark shadow-like outline of Doom Rocket just waiting to pop a balloon or a boat if they get, got too closer. Too close. The triplets knew about the danger of Doom Rock and they kept well away, followed the bigger boats closely, demanded to keep up. The wind was fresh and strong and they all made good progress. De Villon, who had been keeping watch, Notice something thick and feathery, like a giant worm moving swiftly across the surface of the sea. He immediately ordered his silent sailor to hoist the flag that meant sea spitting scene. While Cantan asked her own sailor to fetch the great book of Sagamu, writing in the real sea spirit blood, it read, The sea spirit attacks and eat you when hungry or it feels annoyed. For no reason, try to talk it out of it or keep still. The sea spirit cannot see or hear very well. It will not notice if you stay still. Filling 
world. This was the largest he could ever have imagined he put on his brave face. Gera held her breath, trying not to shake. Suddenly, it was upon them. He slithered just beneath the surface of the ocean well. It was an unpleasant moment. Then, as quickly as it had came, it was gone. Night fell and the boat sailed on. The villain and Slib Dib took turns on watch. But looking out across the moonlight ocean while the earth turned and hurtled through space at it, as it so often does. Finally, the sky lightened and another day began again. The tiny triples felt unwell and they were now a long way behind the other three boats. In the night, they had seen the, the, the light of the biggest boats grow dimmer and he had realised they were getting left behind. Why are we so far back? While Gary had wriggled in between mouthful of salt water. Looking down into the dark blue ocean below, they could now see why. A bag slithered thing hang there just beneath the surface of the See, it was covered in slime, slow drifting, a plastic bag. Before another word was spoke, the flag for Exanton Record was flying from Pellington's mass. Soon all the boats had wandered large bend line ropes around the slimy plastic bag. As they dragged it away, they saw how enormous it really was. The tiny triplets couldn't. Couldn't believe their eyes. The sailor's cloth that the sacred sailor makers could make out of this piece of plastic would be celebrated far and wide. It might even be written in the great book of Sagamoo. Let's get moving. Let's get moving and be prepared to open your gun ports if someone looks at you and through they want to eat you. The villain said to the triplets who weren't sure if he was joking or not. Slib Dib and the villain sniffed the air at the same time. Through some grace and fiercest food, they smelt them before sugar addicts from the sin bin, sin bin as leaves with no teeth, br- teeth, teeth brushes and bad rotting teeth. These two wretches were quite happy to take things off others or even hurt them, and they sometimes did it just for fun. This time, what they wanted was the great plastic bag to patch their own shoddy sails, as they weren't going to take no for an answer. Out on the corner of his eyes, corner of his eyes, the villain could see furious Fred trying to cut his way through one of the ropes carefully tied to the giant plastic bag. The villain fired a volley of sun-hardened giant sagamu beans shot across the wave and Fred's only remaining front tooth suddenly left his mouth blown clear away with, with blood soaking out of his mouth. Fred turned to his plate. As if the shingle shark smelt his opening, would they would try to chill him in life. Grace followed him, pushing the big w- breaking waves through her hair while washing the wreck of her swear words from her 
full now. Once she was gone, the ropes of furious speed had tried to cut, had tried to cut, were soon replaced with new ones, and the boat continued on their way. It was late afternoon by the time the clouds lifted, and there, right ahead, was Mount Sagimu. Sagimu. The Sagimu cross watchers had seen the boat and great bonfire were lit to welcome them home. On the beach, the giant plastic bag was held out and pinned down over the sand dunes until the whole of beautiful Bay Beach was covered in slimy plastic. From the edge of the undergrowth, the sailor clothes scrubbers emerged with wet sponges. They swam over the massive plastic bag quickly scribbling it clean, restore it into its organized colour. Before they lay an enormous spread of bright red plastic, across the bay, Mount Sugumu made a noise and must be exhausted for, followed by a short beach of volcano smoke. The Sugumu drummers started drumming and the scared sailor makers began their cutting dance. They had long white hair on their head and similar be beards. Some of their beards looked like they had been stuck on it. It's true. They were barefooted and weird hooded orange sparkles to keep off the sun. Soon a large pile of plastic sails laid on the beach. With the cutting and chanting complete, the, feast, the festive feast of plastic bag Thanksgiving began. Large slabs of slice and spice megumu beans were thrown on the opening fire and roasted. Everyone joined in the celebration which lasted most of the night. In the sky above, a rising gale sent the clouds rushing feet fast across the moonlight universe. The triplets were feeling extremely tired. They had never done so much sailing before. They had never seen a sea serpent and they had never been attacked by a sugar addict from the Sinbin Islas. They each found the thought of a good night's sleep quite active. The girl raced over the ridge and a beautiful bay island slowly closed on most of the sailor boat. The silent sailors laid about their decks, silently snoring. It had been to skip full plus bag plastic it had been to skip full plastic bag pack roll over the curve of the earth. Once they had caught up on sleep, the sailor boat of Sigmund would all head out to sea again, fresh and kin. They would be back on plastic bag patch roll looking for sailors close and fighting to stay alive out on the hostile seas. Never mind the danger, it was always worth it for the sailing.